Hello and welcome to End All She'll Be Well. I am your host, Megan Rohr, and in this special episode, I'm going to tell you some stories from my trip to Antarctica and share a little bit about what I have done when I have lived through moments where there are no words for the pain. I had always wanted to go to Antarctica, at least um, that was the case after a colleague of mine went on a cruise to Antarctica and talked all about how it was the most uh, wonderful and beautiful and restful trip that they had ever gone on. And they said, at some point before the end of your career, you need to try to be able to take a cruise to Antarctica and experience parts of the world that most people never get to see. And they described the ship and the lectures and the food and how everything was restful, um, in part because in a busy world of always having more to do at work, being in a space where it's too expensive to answer your cell phone is something that personally in my own life helps me to truly, truly disconnect and rest. So um, I looked up how much it cost to go on this trip and it was extraordinarily expensive. Not only was it insanely expensive in a way that I felt like I could not justify, there was a four year long waiting list to be able to get on a ship because only a certain number of people are allowed to go to Antarctica each year because they want to preserve the space and make sure that it has the best environmental ability to move forward into the world. And so I just put it on the it's not possible to go there list. And because once you put something on the it's not possible to go there list, then you sometimes want to go even more. At least that's how it worked for me. I sort of put it in the back of my head, in the back of my heart as a like, I should always like be looking up when it might be a cheaper time or or be possible to go there. And so when the world shut down because of the pandemic, cruise ships were not a thing that people were able or interested in going on for a period of time. And what that meant was that that this four year long waiting list to go to Antarctica sort of dissolved and disappeared because people canceled all of their excursions. And in, in the meantime, environmentally, the cool thing that happened during this one to two year period where cruise ships couldn't go to Antarctica is that the wildlife flourished and there were more whales than before, and the penguins had not seen human beings, and the birds were not um, as familiar with the ships, and the every, every season of Antarctica cruising and the ways that it disrupted the environmental landscape had sort of like reflourished and refreshed. But still, um, at the time that I went to Antarctica, which was... Uh, January of 2023, it it was very like early in the pandemic to be cruising again and still kind of a scary, almost difficult thing. So because the pandemic made it so that many of us weren't able to travel a lot, I had this like buildup of frequent flyer miles that collect on my credit card and from past travel experiences that I could use for something. And I was in a period of time where also my heart was achy. And I, as someone who often was speaking publicly and with other people, and particularly someone who was holding the light of hope for people in deep, dark spaces, whether it's from grief or from addiction or from poverty, um, really needed to refresh Um, and had been sort of in the midst of pandemic with everyone else and was trying to figure out how can I have this like refresh of my own spark of hope as big as the world sort of needs so that I can become more available and outward focused and less worried about the ways that pandemic had affected my own personal life and family. And so I was sort of in a place where For the first time in my career, I kind of was like out of words. I was out and stuck in my own personal pain in a way that made it very difficult to be producing things for other people to try to help them um, have 
joyful experiences in the world. And so I really needed to do something big to sort of restart that and to care for myself and to give myself self-care. And so this idea of going to Antarctica sort of came back to me because people weren't traveling on cruise ships. The, the trip cost was way, 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 way less. And because this four-year waiting list now had, had disappeared, it was possible to get on the list to be able to go on these cruises. And because I had this buildup of, of points, I could go on the cruise. I at least pay for the, the parts of the trip that could be paid for externally through these points rather than having to pay for this extraordinarily expensive cruise. And it felt like because all of these things had sort of come together at the same time, that it was sort of a like once in the lifetime, if you're going to go on this expedition, now is the moment. And so um, my family agreed that it was a thing I could go to because they couldn't, it was during a time in the school year and in work lives that they couldn't join me. They said, um, we want you to have this time of wellness so that you can sort of get re-sparked, um, gave me their blessings and I signed up for the trip. And then you have to do all the things that you do to prepare to go to Antarctica. You got to buy the outfits so that you are warm enough, um, plan all of, all of the things you need to plan for a cruise, um, plan your excursions and your trips, and then all of the extra things that a person like me plans because taking photographs and sharing stuff online is important um, in my life and writing about things into the future is important and I want to be able to transform pain into art at some point. And so you want to be able to bring the art supplies with you that you need if you're going to actively work on transforming pain into passion. So I go on this trip, uh, still can't entirely put it into words because a place as beautifully spectacular as Antarctica should not be possible to put into words. Uh, traveling through Argentina and Paraguay and Uruguay and, and to the edges of Brazil and just seeing spectacular sights witnessing the bravery and creativity of of just some amazingly beautiful folk in the most southern parts of South America was reinvigorating in ways that is, is still hard to articulate. And I'm still working on that art that will help transform the pain into passion. But I, I think what I learned that I can share at this time is that when you don't have words for pain that is real deep, there are still other ways you can sit with the pain, watch it become something else, even if you can't explain it. And, and I'm sharing this story particularly for those who feel stuck. There are so many ways that pain feels too big right now, whether it's politics, it's yearnings for peace, it's grief that we're carrying, it's ways that our communities are fractured and, and yelling at each other in new and, and diverse ways. And so I just want to share with you, if things become possible for you to do something extravagant for your own wellness, it's okay. Because when the pain is so big, you don't have words, sometimes you have to move your feet somewhere else or you have to seek nature that is so beautiful that it can start to chip away some of the ways that you have blinders on for, for the joy and the beauty and the largeness of the world. Going to Antarctica reminded me that it Antarctica was going to be beautiful whether or not I had the ability to go look at it. Antarctica was going to be a sign of perseverance, of animals that I never could have contemplated being able to see. Like there was one day where like 40 whales are just jumping right outside of, of my window and knowing that the creative world exists with so much beauty and abundance, whether or not we notice it or not, reminded me that although my pain was deep, and deserved and something that I was going to continue to work through for a long time, it was not 
the center of the world. Not even the most interesting thing happening in the world. And then as much as I feared what other people might think about me in any given time and frame and place, there were so many parts of the world just had no concept of the things that I was worried about. And it was nice to take a break. So if you have the opportunity to step out of your pain, it doesn't fix the pain, it doesn't resolve the pain, just step out of it for a bit, be with people who have no knowledge of what you're wrestling with, step out of the pain for a bit. You have the ability to, to step into beautiful bits of nature that remind you that the world is beautiful even when it's hard. Go vi view those views. If you have the ability to seek out spaces that can reignite passion or art or whatever it is inside of humans that helps us transform pain into beauty, whether that's through a lesson or through poetry or hugs, whatever it is, seek some of those things because yes there are so many pains right now that are too deep for words yes it feels like they're going to be here forever and we don't know how to get out of them but you don't have to be entirely stuck notice the moments where things become affordable lines disappear and hope is on the horizon. Thanks for listening to my story and thank you for all the ways that you support me and hold the tether of hope when it becomes hard. I really appreciate you and your love and support uh, through, through subscriptions, through Patreon support and through all of the ways that you all have been really holding me in times when it's been hard. It's been noticeable, and I love and thank you. Take care, everybody. <laughs>